the abyss with this one i don't have a ton of opinions on it like i've only seen it a couple times but yeah from what i remember yeah i really enjoyed this one you know I, I love the fact that you know it's a very like claustrophobic movie you know it's a movie you know obviously takes place underwater you know it's like one of james cameron's passion projects you know he's wanted to do since he was in high school he wrote that short story about you know characters diving down to the depths of the ocean and you know encountering some kind of intelligent life under there which i thought yeah was really great you know yeah it's just like a really good just like fun thriller you know takes place underwater you know, obviously it was a very uh, stressful uh, movie to make you know the fact that they spent so much time underwater but the fact that you know James Cameron had the innovations of you know not only like filming underwater but also you know underwater communications with like that helmet system which is really really, really cool it, it kind of like has pros and cons you know I think you know as a just like an underwater you know thriller it works it works really great but when it comes to like the alien life stuff can kind of kind of goes off the, the wagon a little bit you know because it really could have just been you know the oil rigger characters you know trying to go to the depths of the ocean to recover the bomb that was uh, attached to the submarine that that sank to the to the bottom of the ocean it could have been like yeah this whole thriller of you know michael bean's character coffee you know his whole kind of his craziness that he feels when he you know with the with being underwater for too long and then wanting to go after the bomb the ship kind of going into the depths of the ocean and then bud and Lindsay's character having to go down to the depths of the ocean you know recover it and then you know bud having to sacrifice himself so to speak you know because it's really just a one-way trip i thought that could have been like a really cool just like drama right there but the fact that you had the aliens in there i know james cameron loves aliens but i think in a way it was kind of like in my opinion it was kind of a detriment to this story you know i know like the overall theme is supposed to be these kind of like uh non-terrestrial intelligence trying to show like humanity like how how corrupt they are in a way in the special edition um it's supposed to be like this giant tidal wave that's about to crash into these different places around the world and you know the the ntis are kind of in control of all that and they're about to kind of wipe them out but then once they see the relationship between bud and Lindsay, how at first they were kind of antagonistic towards each other but then as the story went on they kind of rekindled their love for each other and then the nti guys were kind of inspired by that and you know they saw that humanity you know was capable of love and capable of compassion and caring for each other so they decided to stop the the tidal waves and that kind of brings world peace in a way so i understand why like critics were you know very you know, critical about that aspect where you know you kind of have this where on one hand like i said before you have this kind of like intense you know claustrophobic underwater thriller and then suddenly it becomes like et in the end where it kind of has like that sentimental thing where like aliens are you're trying to show humans you know how they can be compassionate for each other which which i i, I totally like understand and everything you know I, I think i think i just think the two ideas didn't quite gel with each other in a way but that yeah that's just my opinion but yeah i think i think watching you know the special edition it kind of gives more explanation to kind of like the conflicts between the different countries in the world and like what they're going to be doing about the recovery of this torpedo that went into the ocean and then with these tidal waves about to hit these different parts of uh, of the world how they're going to resolve all that so so yeah I, I totally understand but yeah that's that's kind of just my my kind of overall thoughts on 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 the abyss for for that aspect but one thing that i think everyone can agree on that was really really amazing was just like the visual effects especially the uh, the water tendril effect you know that was really like the first cg animation in a movie kind of like the a soft surface cg animation in in a movie i think the first one was like the stained glass uh, night that was in um the young sherlock holmes movie but this one was kind of like the first kind of like free flowing you know water reflective soft surface animation in film and i thought that was like very very groundbreaking and then obviously they'll kind of continue that on with Terminator 2 with um, the, the T-1000's liquid metal form, but they've yet yeah, Dennis Murin, you know, was, was responsible for that. And, you know, all the innovations he made, you know, with, with that, and then with Terminator 2, like I said before, and then, you know, with Jurassic Park, and then after that, you know, the world changed from there. But the fact that James Cameron was, you know, at the forefront of kind of like this change when it came to CGI and everything, because I think originally he was kind of wanting to do like stop motion animation and then have like a reflective service on the kind of the stop motion puppet that kind of went through the set but you know obviously it probably wasn't going to look great so he started to turn to cgi probably after seeing young sherlock holmes so yeah he turned to dennis Muir and the genius at ilm and you know they yeah the the world was changed after that so yeah if, if anything whether whether you like the movie or not you know you can't deny that you know this was a very far leap forward when it came to the frontier of visual effects and you know that's something I can really appreciate. No, I, I I like the movie. Yeah, don't don't get me wrong. You know, it's not my favorite James Cameron movie, but 
you know, I, I appreciate it for what it, what it is, and then I obviously appreciate what it did for visual effects, pushing that forward. And another thing, just like what I said before, you know, like when it came to like you know the action and everything, you know, when it came to like you know the, the claustrophobia, you know, the action scenes, you know, that take place underwater, you know, like the the kind of submersible battle that they have, um, you know, like the running through the insides of the ship, you know, the the one on one fight between uh, Bud and Coffee, that was really engaging. But yeah, it's like you know James Cameron knows how to direct action, but obviously we you know with Terminator and aliens he has a really good eye for you know what makes a really engaging action sequence and i think one of the things that really helps with that is that you know you care about the characters you, know, you care about sarah and kyle getting away from the terminator you care about you know ellen saving newt from the alien queen and you care about you know bud and Lindsay, you know kind of um, getting away from, from from coffee and you know kind of reuniting in a way so yeah I, I, that's another thing that i appreciate about james cameron's movies is that not only are they like action-filled movies but you know they're also they have a lot of heart to them and you really care about the characters yeah and lastly i just wanted yeah just talk about you know just yeah the underwater scenes you know just like the the, the fact that you know there's a lot of like suspenseful scenes where like characters like drowning or like characters are like in like a claustrophobic area and like the water's rising up you know i, got, I gotta hand it to um all the actors who and, and filmmakers who are part of this movie who kind of all the things that had to go through you know a lot of them had like you know physical and mental and emotional breakdowns you know there's like scenes with the actress who plays Lindsay, where you know she had her emotional breakdown and she was like yelling like we're not animals I, yeah totally totally makes sense you know i totally <laughs> can imagine like what she went through the fact that you know james cameron really pushes his performers to kind of give those kind of authentic performances you know he's kind of like stanley kubrick or like david fincher in a way where he's really like pushing his, his performers to get that emotional response that he needs sometimes he <laughs> kind of goes too far with like you know pushing them to to like a breaking point but i know it's like all for the good of the film you know all for the good of authenticity and you know i, I know there's like reports of him you know kind of like easing up as time gone on you know like sigourney weavers and and kate winslet's like he's like so intense in the beginning but now you know he's he's like a lot more you know relaxed so so I, yeah I, I guess i i understand with that you know he has like this very ambitious vision you know he wants it to be realized in a way so yeah i guess there's you know pros and cons with that you know you know don't bet against james cameron you know every every time you bet against him he's you know he's always going to be pushing the boundaries or you know breaking another box office record or something or um, making some kind of filmmaking innovation you know he puts his money where his mouth is and stuff like that so so yeah i guess i can respect it in that way but yeah you know <laughs> a little intense <laughs>